What if you could control the functions of someone's brain? If you had the ability to manipulate their thoughts, memories, even their actions? You've most likely heard of this concept. Popular culture has been fixated on the idea for decades, wondering what might happen to individuals and society as a whole if mind control was possible. Now, this may come as a surprise, but we're not going to be seeing any maniacal supervillains waging war against humanity with brainwashed armies anytime soon. The kind of mind control we're talking about is on a much smaller, more achievable scale. By using our knowledge of the brain and its most crucial component, the neuron, we can stimulate the brain with something as simple as a flash of light. This new technique is called optogenetics, and it could have a giant impact on neuroscience and the way we think about the human brain and nervous system. The word optogenetics comes from two Greek roots, optikos, which means seen or visible, and genetikos, which means origin or generative. These two definitions mix to create optogenetics, which is a technique that uses both optics or light and genetic modifications to control living cells, which creates a response in the surrounding tissue. But how do we achieve that response? How would you modify a cell to be sensitive to light? The answer was found in the early 1970s. The opposite, a light-sensitive protein found in algae, bacteria, some sea creatures, and even the human eye. Two main types of opsins are used in optogenetics, channel rhodopsin and halorhodopsin. Channel rhodopsin is used for stimulating an electrical impulse, and halorhodopsin is used for silencing electrical impulses. Both work in the same way. When exposed to a particular wavelength of light, an ion channel located in the cell membrane opens and a flow of ions is let into the cell. But how do we take the ion channel from the opsin and make a neuron express its light-sensitive properties? For that, a researcher would need to know both how to edit genes and the process of viral transfection. First, nucleic acids, either RNA or DNA, are extracted from the opsin. This is attached to a section of genetic material called a promoter, which causes the recombinant DNA to be active in only one type of cell. Then, it's inserted into a virus, which is given time to adjust to the change in its DNA before being introduced to the target group of cells. The virus infects the cell by injecting it with its genetic information, and the cell incorporates it into its own genome. Once the cell has the nucleic acid, it starts making the protein that codes for the ion channel. They start forming in the cell's membrane, which makes the cell light sensitive. When the affected neuron is exposed to the right wavelength of light, the ion channel opens up, and the resulting charge causes the neuron to fire, releasing an electrical or chemical impulse. This is transferred to the other neurons of the same type, which provokes a measurable response. Story time. Once upon a time, in a lab far, far away, there was a mouse attached to a fiber optic. When researchers directed a light through this fiber optic into the brain, the mouse began running in clockwise circles. When the light was flashed a second time, though, it went back to its regular mouse activities. So what does optogenetics mean for neuroscience? Researchers believe that optogenetics can lead us to a better understanding of the central nervous system's movement, formation, structure, and functions, along with having better understanding of and potential solutions to neurodegenerative conditions like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's, and various forms of dementia. It can also be applied to other cells in other parts of the body, potentially solving problems in the organs, muscles, bones, and more. And that's all without considering the inevitable. That one day, someone's going to wage war against humanity with a brainwashed army of mice. Thanks for watching.